we're going to go ahead with them. Review of Lewis structures. And bonds. That's pretty sloppy, but that's all right. All right, so the first thing about Lewis structures is that we need to think about our element and we need to find out how many valence electrons that we're gonna have. So if we look at fluorine, let's just start with fluorine, the most electronegative, so it's gonna pull in the most electrons of anybody else. How many valence electrons does fluorine have? It has seven. All right, so if I look at fluorine, it has seven valence electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. How many, ele how many electrons does the octet rule say that fluorine wants to have? Eight, right. Fluorine wants to look just like neon's electron configuration. Fluorine wants to have a full outer shell, which is a full octet of eight. So if I have another fluorine atom and I say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, what can happen with Lewis structures? How many bonds can a fluorine atom make? Let's review that. Just one, lots of one fingers. So these two lonely electrons, this electron here is lonely, it doesn't have a buddy. This one is two, these guys can make a bond. All right. So what happens is this electron over here with our second fluorine atom can go over and fly all around our first fluorine atom. So the first fluorine atom then has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So a full octet. The same thing on our second fluorine atom. This electron from the first fluorine atom can go fly around our second fluorine atom. And that means that this second fluorine atom has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, because that one can fly around here, eight valence electrons. And that gives it a full octet. So a bond fills the octet of each atom, then they are shared. But every time we make a bond, do we fill the octet? Let's consider some other different atoms, okay? If we look at, let's say lithium, okay? Lithium has one valence electron. So if we consider lithium, all right, we have one valence electron. Lithium could make a bond with fluorine. So let's draw a fluorine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We'll make them look just like that one. And so all of those trends are kind of coming back to be put together with this bonding thing. Lithium's electron can make a bond there. Okay. So if we consider these, we said up here that these electrons in the bond can fly around either atom in the bond. Okay, that makes sense. Look at this situation with lithium and fluorine. If this electron from fluorine goes and flies around lithium, does it fill lithium's octet? No. It would only give lithium two electrons flying around the outer shell, and that's not enough to fill that second energy level. So what happens? If lithium's still not happy, even though it can make that bond, what really happens? 
No thoughts? Any thoughts? Here's what really happens. Lithium's little electron spends all of its time over here on fluorine. So this electron kind of stays over there. Kind of like somebody who has a best friend goes and just kind of lives there at their best friend's house. You guys know people that, have, that do that a lot. So then fluorine gets a negative one charge because this extra electron is now at fluorine's house all the time. If fluorine gets that extra electron and has a negative charge, what charge does that make lithium have? So let's consider we have three protons. We took away one electron, so now we only have two electrons. So what is our charge? I saw one little finger. Okay, it is plus one. So lithium has a plus one charge. Now, we can still show the bond this way, but we have to remember that all, all atoms want their octet to be full. And so in this situation, lithium's electron goes and fills fluorine's octet and, li and leaves lithium, leaving lithium with a full outer shell, which is just two in this case. So up here we were sharing. Down here, electron is taken. Are they both still bonds? Yeah, absolutely. Do they both still happen? Yes. So we're going to put a name on it. This is called covalent. We'll talk about those in depth later on. And this is called ionic. So the bottom line is still the same. We still want to fill the outer shell of each electron just that in lithium's case having this extra electron flying around it doesn't fill the shell so it gives up that electron all right give me a thumbs up if that makes sense okay all right um, i want to go over one more thing that you will encounter as you uh as you go through these next set of questions and ck12 stuff if i look at this bond between fluorine, how many valence electrons are there total for both of those two atoms? Well, we could count them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, right? Or we could do a little math, okay? So we know that there is seven for each fluorine atom. There's two fluorine atoms, so valence electrons times number of atoms. So we had two fluorine atoms equals 14 total valence electrons. What about for this lithium fluorine business? How many total valence electrons are there? There's eight. So we could look at it by counting. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's super easy. Or we could look at it as lithium has one, and there's only one atom of lithium. So that's one. Fluorine has seven, and there's one atom of fluorine. So that equals seven, and then we have eight. So there's two ways. You can count or you can add them up using numbers. Either way that you wanna use is perfectly fine. It's your choice. But you just need to be able to tell how many total valence electrons there are. So we'll do one more practice and we'll kind of make it really 
a little bit more. We'll talk about it. Let's look at magnesium. How many valence electrons does magnesium have? I heard some people say two, because if we look at magnesium on the periodic table, magnesium is in the second group, has two valence electrons. We know that magnesium is also in the third period, so that means that it has to get eight. It's not a number one that can only hold two, so we're trying to get to eight. So that's why we separate our, our valence electrons. And let's look at oxygen, okay? Oxygen has six valence electrons. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Can I make a bond there between magnesium and oxygen? I could. This lonely electron could buddy up. This lonely electron could buddy up. What do we call that bond right there? It is, it, it, well, what, what did we call it? It's not a single bond, but it's a it is a double bond. All right, now let's dig deep into what we just did. Okay, total valence electrons. How how many for this for this molecule? Okay, we have 8 because oxygen has 6 and we only have one oxygen atom. So we have six from there. Magnesium has two, and there's only, magnesium has two, and there's only one magnesium atom. So that means we get two. We have eight total valence electrons. All right, and let's think a little bit harder too. If the electrons from these two bonds are all surrounding magnesium. Does that give magnesium a full octet? No, because we'd have one, two, three, four. We only have four. So what's gonna happen to the electrons on the outside of magnesium? Where are they gonna spend all their time? Okay, they're gonna spend all their time around oxygen. What charge does that give oxygen? It's got two extra negatives. So let's think, okay, if oxygen now has two more negatives, then it does positives. So we'll think, okay, we have eight protons in oxygen all the time, because that's what oxygen does. So that's plus eight. But we now have, instead of eight, we have 10 electrons. So what's the charge on oxygen? Negative two. So oxygen gets a negative two charge. What's the charge on magnesium? Magnesium has 12 protons. We took away two of its electrons, so it only has 10 electrons, positive two. So magnesium is gonna have a positive two charge. Okay. So from this, we can talk a little bit about electronegativity. We can see why oxygen is more electronegative than magnesium. It wants those electrons because it fills the octet for it. So it just takes them. And then creates this positive and negative. What do you guys know is true about opposites? They attract, like the north and south pole of a magnet. Clicks together. Okay, we say that about people, but I question that. So we have positive and negative. They're going to attract to each other. And that's where the bond actually forms is in this um, charge that occurs to each of those atoms. All right, give me a thumbs up if that makes sense. Okay, all right, so we're just kind of getting started with this. We'll answer some questions that are in the lesson, and then I will um, we'll get into it a little bit more tomorrow. So let's go back to the lesson.